And we're back on Backstory uh, with my guest, Lou Nolan, legendary PA announcer for the Philadelphia Flyers. Recently, uh, we had just um, spoke with Lou about the Soviet Union coming here and playing the Flyers. I want to finish up with that. Sure. When you, when you were told that we're playing, you know, and they're coming here, what homework did you have to do just to know how to pronunciate the Russian names? Well, they were a handful, and um, uh, now I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> um, I, it's easy for me to do the Nikolai Sologibov and to get to our, our Medvedev uh, and people like that. But um, uh, Gene Hart helped me a lot. Did he? Uh, Gene was fluent in Russian. How was he? A good friend, yep, and uh, um, helped me go through the names and put together a few phrases yeah, and so forth. And uh, um, it was interesting. And, and names in general, now I can, I can see the flow of some names. At the Olympics, the first game I had at the Olympics, 2002, was Chinese women. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. So <laughs> just digress a bit. You got to hear this. <laughs> and um, we had a whole group of people there, and, and uh, one French announcer, uh, he was, we're all on headset, and there's no paper. I work with paper. There's no right. paper. It's all computer. So I'm doing the names, and they're all lined up, you know, and, you know, Chin Yan and Young this and Young that. So I hear him say, hey, Louie, they're looking at you. Now, when people are looking at you yeah. or looking for you, it's yeah. not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and one by one, they would look. They'd lean out and look for me. I had all the names backwards. You know how the names are backwards? No way. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> the way they put them up on the thing, they were all backwards. So, you know, Nolan Lou. So that's why Who they were looking guy? at you. No, they were looking at me. But the, the tough names are the Slavic names that I don't know from the NHL. They yeah. Were, and, and even now, I'll go down and I'll, I'll talk to uh, the, the PR man from the teams and say, how about this name? We do have a pronunciation guide, of course. Right. But I'll ask about names. And I'll ask a player if I, uh, if I forget to do that and he comes in the box and, you know, I'll say, how did I do with your name? They say, oh, you did good. <laughs> or they say it's wrong. And I fix it. Quick story. We, we, in, during the break, we were talking about, I don't know how we got on the subject, but Kenny Lintzman, uh, who used to play <laughs> with the Flyers, uh, they called him the Little Rat. And I asked you if they ever threw a rat onto the ice, and you and you had a story that actually wasn't about Philly, though. No, it's about Florida, yeah. and um, uh, it started with a, a live rat running on the ice and a player uh, in a close game getting it with a stick, and you know, boom, do on dead right. rat. Excuse me, and um, uh, they won that game, and um, someone thought about bringing a rat, a rubber rat which they probably bought at uh, uh, five and under, whatever it is, and um, threw it on the ice the next game because they won the next game too. Yeah. And it started. And then the owner, Wayne Huizenga, who um, uh, got involved in that himself, uh, would have rats. So they sold rats outside. Entrepreneurs <laughs> were selling rats for five bucks on the way in. And they would litter the, litter the ice with rats. So if a goal was scored, right. whoosh, you know, it would be – Hundred rats out there. Well, the league says, "Wait a minute, you know, <laughs> a hat trick." Okay, you know, if they're going to clean up the hats, they clean up the hats. Every goal, you're going to clean up a hundred rubber rats. Uh, you know, it, it makes the game longer and longer and longer. But that was the story of the rats. They, they, they stopped had, that. They could have had a nice uh, commercial piece there selling rats. I would think at the uh, well fan shop. You know, maybe Huzenga had a piece of that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's how that story went, Chuck. Do you think you have the best seat in the house? Well, it's been advertised that I do. Okay. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I certainly know what's going on. Uh, I can't see the corners real well, but I do have a television. Okay. So, uh, you know, a monitor. So that helps me. And, um, you know, lots of people come down and people I haven't seen for years and saying hello to me and all that inside the box. But uh, it's a lot of fun. And the guys I work with, the NHL guys, are great. So well, when that they, helps. Well, they come off the ice, and let's say we got, you know, two fighting calls, and uh, you got somebody from the Rangers and the Flyers. Uh, do you, uh, you, you're you aware of there's some other communication when they come off the ice? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it all depends on who the people are and how uh, how important the game is. Yeah. Um, 
for instance, uh, you know, if, if a young guy is trying to make it as a fighter, now the league has changed a little bit, so right. uh, it may not be that way now. But Donald Brashear, who played with us, um, you know, they would ask guys who drop their gloves and say, will you go with me? Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, sure. You know, then they fight and they get in the box and they sit down. And uh, I, more than once, the young guy turned to a veteran guy and say, thanks for the fight. I appreciate it. I say, no problem. <laughs> Glad to do it. Then there are other ones where they're really upset with one another. Right. And, um, you know, they go back and forth. So, uh, Do you ever get in the middle of one or with the fans behind you? Uh, a couple times in the early years yeah. with Boston. Yeah. Uh, we had – At the uh, uh, Phil Esposito years, Bobby Orr years? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Those teams uh, uh, were nasty. Uh-huh. The Big Bad Bruins, just like right. the Flyers. Sure. And, you know, with, with Esposito, when he lined up with a penalty, he never thought he was guilty of any, of course. Was that Bobby Clark that thought the same way? Yes, he did. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to mention that, Chuck. He beat me to it. And, um, you know, the great players. And uh, the fans, the glass was low, and the fans could talk to them. And somebody in the second or third row, you know, threw something at them, and, and it starts. You know, guys start climbing over, and you, skates are nasty. You don't want to get... Right. Somebody climbing over you with skates on. Dennis, I pronouncing this hopefully right, you should know. Polonic. Polonic. Detroit Red Wings. Yes. Um, and I do remember this. There is a um, an incident with Andre Dupont. Oh, you got it. Can, do you do you have the insider trading information on that? Not a lot, other than uh, you know they go at it on the ice and sticks and everything else and. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was a that was a good one always with Polonic. <laughs> he was tormenting. Du- well, he Dupont. torment Dupont. Dupont would torment him back. Oh, I mean, okay, okay. Dupont never took anything from, any, <laughs> from anybody. I don't think that any of that team did. Did they? The, the Broad Street? Not Bowl? really. No. Not really. No. And uh, Polonic was a tough guy, and uh, they get in the box, and Polonic would never stop. Hey, Doopy. Hey, Doopy. It was his voice was like that. <laughs> Any yeah. special Fedorix? He's stories. one of the guys who uh, who, who thanked a. Um, a uh, person for a fight once. But I do recall once, I think it was Rob Ray from Buffalo. Yeah. And um, Ray fought Fedorik when Fedorik was a rookie. And Fedorik cleaned him up. And Rob Ray's tough. Yeah. And, um, you know, Ray came in the box and he said, uh, they're sitting there, and he said, somebody lend me a phone, will you? And I said, what do you need a phone for? He says, I got to call Matt Barnaby and <laughs> tell him that Fedorik's <laughs> left-handed. Because <laughs> he just was he got plummeted. Caught. But Fedorik, you know, he's ambidextrous. So if okay. somebody's got a hold of one <laughs> arm, he's going to hit you with the other arm. Wow, great stories. Uh, we're going to head to commercial break, and we'll be back with legendary Lou Nolan.